The following is the most watched excerpt from my conversation with Aditya Kothari, who, after his master's in business analytics from Purdue University, cracked the case interview at Capital One and many other places. This video is laser focused on the exact steps that you should follow as an international student in the US, as someone that is not well versed with how case interviews work in general, to both prepare and practice for your next case interview. These can be tricky, especially if you've never been exposed to them, because you literally have to do math in front of interview viewers while they watch every single mistake that you might make. Subscribe for more videos around getting hired and without any further ado, let's get started. Did you want to walk us through what the general case looks like that people are generally presented? Yep. I know you normally start with a premise and then there's some questions to be answered and sometimes there may or may not be the need for recommendations in the end. I know that's a oversimplified scenario. Before we deep dive into what exactly happened, it's important to know that there are different types of cases and different roles demand cases. Uh, you know, a lot of these cases are business problems where you know business context is placed and questions asked. But case interviews are actually not limited to that. Many times, the data science positions ask uh, have case interviews where uh, they expect a very very data science and stat heavy answers. Sometimes they'll send you a link in the middle of the case interview and you know, it'll open a code signal or some form of a coding interface, and then there'll be two more questions over there, some based on the context you've got. So a bunch of some case interviews are take home, you go home, you do some assignment, you build a deck and you come back and then you start working with the interviewer on those cases. They'll go through your solution, they'll ask you questions as you were presenting to stakeholders in your company at work. So, but generally, uh, when you look at these business cases, they're uh, a very big, broad context, a broad, open-ended question where they you know they try to set up context and they ask you some basic, ask you a very basic question. You know, uh, they're, they're, and the goal over here is, is to see how you structure your thoughts. Uh, and, and, and this is very, very important in case interviews is they're, they're, they're evaluating in how you think, what you think. So, for example, you know, let, let's let's go over these with some examples. One of my cases, they asked, they said, you know, the first question was, imagine that you are a company that sells prescription glasses online. You're planning on opening a brick and mortar stores. You want to go offline. What are the various things you'll consider before starting this? So, we heard they're essentially trying to see so many ideas. You know, there are hundreds of ways you can answer this question. And there is no right way to answer this question, but there's definitely wrong ways to answer this question. And that is, you know, keep saying random thoughts and ideas and, you know, you get a lot of frameworks online. I would, I would approach this question with something like, you know, I would look at the market attractiveness. I would see, is there a market for people who want to buy it offline? Then I would look at, and you know, a bunch of aspects under market attractiveness to truly really see that market is attractive with selling offline. Is, is there any revenue? Is it already happening? And then I would look at competitive landscape where we would want to understand the other people that are working in this space. Other people that are, will they let you enter this space or not? Barriers to entry, essentially. Yes, yes. Yes, the barriers to entry and all of those. And then I would look at my capabilities. As a company, am I capable of doing that? Do I have the expertise I need? Will I need to hire people outside? What kind of investments will this demand? What kind of, and even more than investments, many times they did just involve, you know, very different kind of people who are experts in this, or you will have to hire a lot of contracting firms. And then finally, look at profitability. Like, will it actually drive additional revenues? Should I survey my customers, existing customers to see if they want something? Buckets I would put them in. Again, over here, there is no right answer. Some people like to approach this as cost drivers, profit drivers, or cost drivers, revenue drivers. And, and they speak about this and it doesn't really matter as long as you've covered few important points and you've covered them in a very structured manner. It's important to be, uh, to not intermix, you don't keep repeating points and don't mix. Don't talk about revenue under a cost driver, don't talk about cost under a revenue driver. And what's a good amount or just in terms of a rule of thumb, what's a good amount of time to spend before you start responding? Because it sounds like if this were me, I would obviously, you know, first try to, first start to jot down thoughts, what I'm feeling. And, but obviously that would be linear. I think nobody likes someone that starts answering as soon as the questions given in the case interviews. It just shows that you've not thought a lot. And honestly, I would recommend taking a minimum of a minute and a maximum of 90 seconds or maybe even two minutes to answer this question. Because I think the first question is very important. You really set up premise for the entire key. You want to start off on the right foot. That's very difficult to bounce back from if you're, you know, just not making exactly any sense. Yeah, yeah exactly. And, and uh, 
again i might be wrong over here but i think it's great to have the interviewer like you from the first moment itself because how much they want to correct you it's just their bias they can decide to correct you a lot or they might decide to correct you a little less than that and that might really be a game changer for you so so i want to set off the premise really really well right off the bat from the first question and that's where it's really really important to take some time i would word vomit like i said you don't need to have any points but you think of four points and you think structure them correctly draw your charts graphs whatever you can structure them correctly it's a lot about quality over here than the quantity of your points and then you mention it and then sometimes what happens is they will ask you is that all do you think anything else is there in the revenue that's where you know you got to that's when you can you'll realize that they're looking for something to think more in and in, in in that particular area where they're asking you and try to answer that because they'll keep sometimes probing you until they get that one word out and then they'll start giving you numbers or more questions related to that so that's the starting premise where you're just objectively thinking about a business situation in terms of either revenues costs or porter's five forces whatever it may be and then let's say we're at that phase where you know you you were able to satisfactorily align on with the interviewer all the important points around that premise so what happens from that point so they will go ahead they will maybe ask another qualitative question you know something like okay fine you decided to open your uh, brick and mortar stores uh, where will you open that or what they can do is they can start giving off numbers saying you know they cost X Y Z amount of money. How long do you think you're gonna break even? And the one thing that I've seen across these case interviews and their math is that the math is actually very simple. It's your basic GRE GMAT math, but it's forming these equations or putting these numbers in the right places. That's where people mess up. I've seen a lot of people say that you know they've made silly mistakes, and that's just because of this. So their questions are designed. The numbers are designed to be tricky, just to see how thorough you are. They will give you five data points, varying between one being weekly, one being monthly. monthly one being annual so you'll have to bring them to the same unit they'll say some in a million some in thousands so it it you know it's, it's it's a lot about getting the right numbers and putting them in the correct places than about math the math is actually very simple in all of these case interviews so yeah there will be a general math question usually at least in non consulting cases once that is done they will go back to you know if, if the break even period is too long they will ask okay do you think it's a good idea if yes great if not you got to give reasons why and and then they give you more and then it becomes repetitive they give you more numbers you do some math and then you go back to giving more solutions sometimes you know, they ask very different questions sometimes i was asked a market sizing question like how many people in the us do you think wear glasses etc um sometimes uh, they will ask you to draw a graph and show it on screen oh. that also happens so a lot of things yeah like there's a lot of things that they can ask in a case interview but the general rule applies everywhere take your time structure your answers make sure your math is right and respond to them it does really sound like it's the presence of mind almost that's the underlying theme you know being able to stay calm under pressure because i have been there and i'm as a view but it is a substantial amount of pressure to you know be doing all of this in front of you know a stranger so actually at least in my experience a lot of these cases even if you are wrong they will not say you are wrong they will actually ideate with you they'll say but your right sales may increase but you know there might be cannibalization where you know you're launching this product might in up your other product and you'll come up with a counter or sometimes you know when you give your numbers they'll be like mm, that does not seem right are you sure about that i caught it will be xyz so, you know the very subtle but they try to correct you when you're wrong and that's a lot of case interviews they do try to correct you because the goal is to get to the solution work together and get to the solution and that's what happens in your work environment right you make mistakes people correct you you work on them and and dealing with mistakes also you know it's very important i think i think a part of it is they disagree with you just to look at your humility they they, they you know sometimes you know i remember this one interview where i gave a recommendation and the interviewer said no i don't think that's right this x y z that might happen that might just not work and you know for a second you know you you've thought a lot you've given a really really great recommendation in ad and they completely say no to you now you know sometimes i could either argue more or i could you know assert my point even more or i could go back look at the data and say no this is xyz data and this is what it is or i could agree with their disagreement i could yeah. say yeah maybe i was wrong you're actually right this is xyz data that says that you're right how did you end up reacting to that by the way with that situation around when the person said no that's wrong i think if i recall correctly it was a case related to buying an apartment complex and they gave a bunch of numbers and it looked like it was gonna take about 4 or 5 years to break even they asked me if it was a good idea to buy it and i said yes i think it's a good idea to buy it and while i was gonna jump into the reasons they said but 7 years you know 
such a long duration does not work and you don't know what will happen i think over there what i felt was the lot of the numbers that they gave initially that would that translated to fixed costs and variable costs were very inflated and there was a lot of ways to really reduce them to bring them to more okay. reasonable numbers and that was the premise of my argument was that i actually asked for some time i also reduced these numbers i decided what appropriate numbers were numbers were i recalculated a break even period and told them i did xyz calculation and my new calculation says that if if we were to achieve these numbers would break even in two years and i think that's a really great essay investment like that i think i was able to luckily we had time and i was able to come up with numbers and over here again there is no right answer i think the the, the and, and i knew that that there is no right answer i just wanted to present a really smart answer to them and and that's what i tried doing honestly over here right sometimes in case interviews you got to think how to score those extra points rather than just you know being right it's okay to be wrong if you show that you're a really good analyst absolutely my next point which is that what are some resources or tools that you found particularly helpful when you were preparing for case interviews yeah. um I think the two aspects uh, when it comes to preparation one is just studying the other one is practice so in studying if i find a bunch of material online i'll speak about the material i used which i like and which i recommend to people but this is not the only ones out there and they don't always work for everybody one is victor cheng if you google content from victor Let's cheng we'll be adding all of these links to the show notes so Yeah, awesome. Yeah, you'll you'll find a bunch of YouTube content or websites with a stuff a work from Victor Cheng. He has a lot of information about these frameworks you can use to answer these qualitative questions that you have in place. And then there is this book called Case in Point. And the initial part of Case in Point is good. They again talk about a lot of structures and setting up context. And they have a bunch of example cases. These example cases are very very consulting heavy. So if you're not really going to be doing consulting case interviews, I don't think you'd need that much knowledge. You'd rather use your time in getting getting some more domain specific or that case interview specific skill but what i mean by this domain specific skill is for example capital one cases are math heavy so i'd practice a lot of math at pull out gre g math try to practice math if if you're doing a case that might be a uh, you know slightly technical where you know this chance they might ask you to write some code or or talk about some technique you would use ml technique you would use to solve this problem then i'd rather prepare for that than spend time on these consulting case examples reach out to alumni to or really shameless the other recruiter what kind of case it's going to be you know what could i expect or what other things you test me or what kind of math questions will be there nothing to lose by asking they will share whatever they are allowed to share and that's great so i think studying here you you essentially build context on some basic frameworks you can use that can apply to a bunch of cases you look at a lot of practice problems and see how people are solving them you learn a lot one thing to note uh, one thing one point away is that i had the subject and i'm sure you did too called strategic management i learned so many things in that yeah subject and then as i started reading this case interviews i started seeing there you know so many of these business buzzwords being used in a lot of examples and it's very very important i think to you know pick up on these buzzwords i actually had a list of like 30 buzzwords i just wrote down these buzzwords so that i'd remind myself to use them in the interviews whether i use them in my day to day speaking or not and then coming to practice so my first interview in the us was actually wayfair it's an online furniture retailer here and and it was also a case interview i studied a lot i st- studied so much i studied everything i could think of and i went over there to that interview and absolutely tanked it i was so bad i was doing silly mistake i was unable to answer properly i was my thoughts were all over the place and i realized that i did not practice i just i studied everything everything was in my mind but i did not practice and that's why i tanked everything and i think that do more cases with your friends i was lucky enough to have a bunch of smart people around me so and willing to help each other and i could do so many mocks with people who were already interviewing giving case interviews people who've done case interviews in the boss if your friends are unwilling to help find people on linkedin i thought not... you were going to say find better friends no no that might work too but yeah but yeah people on linkedin and i think as a last resort family i suppose cuz really it's just reading off a script you know they they're not the ones that have to actually do things they they're just reading sentences so you get your family ask them to ask questions see your answers out and then sit and think if you said it right and you know, they they take care of the logistical aspect like hi time is up etc etc or use youtube so you will find so much material oh also i forgot to mention this this channel called hacking the case interview that i really like it is a bunch of material on different types of cases uh, 
you have time to prepare just go watch those videos i can case the case interview the channel is great coming back to this there's a lot of practice cases you find online so i would recommend go wait for them to ask their question pause say your answer within the time you want to use and then listen to them because they also solve and they will talk about the things that they would mention thank you for watching that please subscribe if you found value in that i have a bunch of videos coming up especially just around excerpt from previous podcasts where i highlight the most important or the most watched bits of that show see you all in the next one or in maybe one of my podcasts thank you